Hey, welcome back again, Auto Transport Intel. Welcome back to the show, Dave. All right, man, you're the first one in. That's awesome. Uh, of course, I'm Jay. I'm the car hauling dispatcher, and this is Tuesday nights live on Auto Transport Intel when we get a chance to get together. And the show's running about 90 minutes now, so I hope you're settled in, ready for your ELD break. And um, Roxy Auto Transport, welcome to the show. I think this is your first time here, so I welcome you to the show. I want to say that, uh, you know, I work really hard to put this show together, and I hope it shows, and um, I want it to be fun, and I also want it to be informative, so I hope all that happens every time. And uh, it's a crapshoot. It's a live show, so you never know what's going to happen. Um, Hotshot Dave, welcome back to the show. The Nerds on 18 Wheels, welcome back. I really appreciate you guys coming in. You know, you can email me anytime, autotransportintel at gmail.com. I will reply. Um, if you've got a friend that needs a dispatcher, somebody needs a car moved, maybe there's an equipment manufacturer or a car hauling software uh, representative I should talk to, maybe insurance is too high, whatever it is, I want to talk about it. So uh, we're going to start with some industry news here in a second, and then we're going to move into, um, that's going to be about 20 minutes, so if you don't like that, you just grab your timeline, go ahead to 20 minutes, and our first interview will be with Conrad at My Trucking Numbers. That's going to be cool. He's got a uh, browser-based software, easy to use, easy login and the point is that on your mobile device as a driver do some record keeping um, he's got a cool story and we're gonna talk to a user of that and then also then if you move ahead to 845 we're gonna talk to Glowstone Trucking Solutions we're gonna talk to Luke Kibbe um, he was the moderator today of an ELD webinar and they've got an amazing amount of um, resources for carrier compliance in their online library at glowstone.com so that's going to be cool uh d newsom welcome to the show not sure if i've seen you before in here so i really appreciate it that's cool the one and only welcome back i really appreciate it so okay let's dive into industry news now i don't have a jingle uh but i, I guess i could maybe that you know i i would i talk i don't talk over the theme song because it gets a little loud. So when you're tucked up for the night and a fridge truck parks alongside you, I picked this as the first slide because I know, listen, I, I don't park out in the parking lot. I'm a dispatcher. I'm sitting at my desk and I'm on the phone, but I think about you guys out on the road and yeah, that's got to be hard. Sometimes you can't find a good spot at a truck stop to get some sleep <laughs> and now you've turned into uh, Captain Kirk. So Hey, Mike M., welcome back to the show. Um, all right, so let's keep going. All right, we got to get through a lot of these. The roads are fine. Snow hole. That's, that's what it feels like sometimes. Absolutely. I thought that was pretty cool. I don't know who made that, but I like it. Uh, it's good Photoshopping. Now, that is not a Photoshop. Cash me gone round a scale. How about that? You guys know that meme? How about that? I'm sure you do. But even if you don't, you know that's not going to work out. Going probably going around the scale. That probably is true. And who took the picture? <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, that's a. Uh, I think that's a paper log. And I think the point of this is that I'm sorry, officer, but that's not mine. Uh, that you can't. You won't be able to do that much anymore. And then you've got a. You got a hammer and some water, and that looks like actual water. Uh, Alexander Collado's back. All right. Thanks for joining me back once again, Alexander. Um, was literally two minutes over for the 30-minute break. Middle of nowhere, North Dakota, delivering to a farm. Could see the farm in sight when I ran out of time. Anyone been ticketed for only two minutes over? It just so happens that, um, as they're talking about in the ELD circles, that the soft enforcement is over. The answer is yes. They are ready to crack skulls over uh, those two minutes. So I'm sorry about that. I mean, I hate to bring the bad news. In fact, this show, I mean, we got, I think we have some bad news. Um, so that'd be the, uh, I'm sorry about that. I really am. 
Um, I was gonna, I was thinking about doing some car hauling. Is this a good way to start? Yeah, maybe. Looks a little tight, though. Where is this, anyways? Is he? I don't know. I guess he's loaded up and ready to go. Why not? Um, send it. And this is, uh, this is Im improvising, I think was the title of this. Improvising. Um, something about, I think, I think this was a freight hauler and their dispatcher didn't get the right part. I don't know. In car hauling, I don't, I don't order parts. I think I've been asked once. And that's why you don't want me ordering parts for you. Okay. Yeah, I slowed down to tell them. You see that? Who's had that happen? Come on, somebody has had this happen. Right? Let's see what else we got in the comments here. Also, I'm going to try and not let comments go by without at least acknowledging. Uh, Dominic Satchel says, what's going on, everyone? Happy to make another live episode. Awesome. Man, we are too. Welcome back. That's cool. Um, this is... <laughs> that is not apple juice. There's a lot of jug noise dot com going around how many days does it take to fill a jug that full <laughs> that is a good question who's doing the math right now i know somebody's doing the math on that yep still running strong after all these years man look at that look at that odometer i mean i i would love to know how high of an odometer do some of you guys get on your trucks i mean i think don't don't like semis get like a million miles or something crazy i think surge showed a really crazy odometer once um what makes a tire wear like this what makes a tire wear like this sounds like a celine dion album <laughs> i don't know I don't know. Somebody say I saw that I saw there was a reply and it was like a list of like ten things. So I don't know. It wasn't very specific. Okay, I think this is a sleeper cab. Is that a Don't you wonder how you can't get through the DOT? And this I mean, even to just get this picture, they look like they're at a rest area. I don't know. I mean, even just get even taking that picture, I would think you'd get strung up by your toenails in Iowa. What happened here? Wrong answers only. Those wrong answer only memes are uh, interesting. And what did happen there? What is that? That's pretty nuts, man. Looks like it. Looks like it just got chopped. Which I'm not sure. Maybe did they slam into a flatbed? Like hard? This looks like it. My buddy's Duramax says 535,000. Wow, that is crazy. That's awesome. Um, yeah, this guy... Okay, this looks like... So this... I don't think this was U.S. domestic, or was it? I don't know. Nonetheless, it's interesting that he stopped. And he got out to take a look. Maybe he, maybe he slowed down and stopped. I don't know. I don't know. What do you do? Back up and unload? Is that what you do? Seems like it. That is crazy. Okay. Industry news is fun, isn't it? We've got 10 more minutes. All right. Automatic trucks ain't real semi-trucks. Have a good day. Yeah, do you see the, uh, I don't know, what do you call that? The shifter? It looks like a, um, you know those Harleys where you sit with your arms way up? That's what it looks like to me. That's pretty intense, bro. I feel like a real man. I mean, I would... Yeah, would feel like a real man. Uh, <laughs> whatever that means. For those of you with airbags without the pump kit, why do you? What do you use to air them up? Just got this battery-powered pump. Works great. It's pretty cool. I've never seen that before. So that's pretty neat. I have to get one of those around the house. That could definitely come in handy. You think? I don't know. I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, I think, oh, here's another product from Ryobi. Wow, what is this, the Ryobi show? I think this is the best purchase, around 120 bucks at Home Depot. I've made, don't let its size fool you, this little guy puts out some serious air. Definitely beats finding a washout and waiting in line. Takes five minutes on average to blow the debris out of the trailer, good to go. It's a pretty good idea. 
keep some tools. But I know as Sean was saying, I mean, once, you know, when you consider all the stuff you could carry, man, you got a lot of stuff. That's an interesting load. Never, I never did successfully book a limo. It's not happened. Not yet. Just can't seem to book that limo. Oh, look, and then he's right behind it. He's got a probably, I'm going to guess, I'm going to guess that's a not a run and drive. Well, you never know. I mean, you know, it probably drives. All right, with its 535,000 miles. This guy next to me was a jerk, tried to warn him, but he gave me and my friend Neil attitude at the dealership. You want to pick this car up? Your car for cheap rates, this is what you get. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's car hauling right there. Look at that. Here we go. Let's get a close-up of that. There you go. Yep, there's your, uh, yeah, there's your uh, cheap car hauler, I guess. Uh, hey, Jay, how's it going? What's up, Nadia? You'll like this show. This is about carrier compliance. We should have some great comments. Uh, sh should be some good back and forth. Use car. Customer complains on this tiny scratch. Thank God took good picks on pickup. Man, how many times a day, how many car haulers a day across the nation say, thank God I took good pictures at pickup? Can't even hardly see that thing. But it is a little scratch on the, uh, just on the cover there. Hey, what's up, Days of Bliss? Welcome back to the show. You like the van, Dave? Yeah. Yeah, man. Nice van. Uh, I'll see you at the Copart. Well, no ratings, no dispatch. Can I get some help with this? It is a catch-22. And if you go, clearly, if you go on Facebook and you ask for ratings, man, get ready for some blowback I'm telling you. It's hardcore. Paul Roberts, welcome to the show. Yeah, carrier compliance all day long. Starting at 845, it's going to get pretty compliant up in here. Uh, please use your headlights when it's raining. Can't even hardly see that guy. Why do people do that? Yeah, okay. You know, it's it's cool, man. You know, don't don't turn them on. Don't don't put on your blinker, don't put on your lights and swerve all over the place. Why do people speed up in the rain? I don't know, man. Get an ELD on that guy. Let's see how this turns out. This is like one of those uh this is almost like a bazooka comic strip. You know, caption this, you know. Hey, Joe, have any gum? I don't know. Those are dumb. <laughs> nobody, nobody reads Bazooka Joe comics anymore. Uh, I didn't get any BS freebie ratings. Yeah, you didn't? Hey, what's up, self-made? Welcome back to the show. Uh, okay, so I think this happened today. We're now, we're now going to go into the natural disaster part of the show. Um... So what, now what do you do with your ELD? Act of God. Part 5. I don't know. What do you do? Put it in the notes. Anybody on here that was headed to Ohio yesterday, driver, driver is good, load not so much. Yeah, man. Look at those crispy cars, man. Dang. That is crazy cray. I don't think anybody says that anymore either. Things change so much, so fast now. Like, what happened to fidget spinners? A year ago, everybody, man. Fidget spinners. Today, nothing. Nada. Uh, gridlock. How do you put that on your ELD? You should be able to. Like, traffic sucks. Guy flipped his car. There is something, like, down the road. Ha. Huh, uh, somewhere along the way, we're going to figure out, like, you know, if, if you road rage and flip your car, that's a million dollar fine. Something. I don't know. Something's got to happen. Send a drone in and, I don't know, take pics. You got to go live on Facebook for 10 minutes. One reason why I love Texas. I put that in here because, you know what? Don't you hate it when you can't drive faster than you can think? Like, man, come on. I got to get somewhere. Um, really? Only 50 spots in this truck stop, and this happens. So, yeah. 
that's truck parking that's another thing man there's so many there's so many things we could talk about and truck parking just you know how often do you see a person or a car in truck parking and I know listen man when I first went to a rest area Coons age ago I might have parked over by the trucks once thinking you know not knowing the difference you know people don't know these things I can't believe I just told that story uh, okay drivers we're gonna have to stick together and make a stand against having to pay to park I'm against it we drive all day and all night they want us to pay to park they think we're made of money don't know about y'all but I can't pay every time I stop for a 10-hour break I have bills and a family to take care of this TA got more pay to park then free parking in Denver, Colorado. The security guard told me that they will make the whole parking lot that way. Write a letter to TA, Pilot, Flying J, to stop or we will not park there at their lots. This is a free country and we have a voice. And I think somebody replied, you know, get over it. So there you go. Um, this I thought was pretty cool. Quick poll on bobtailing. This spot overfills quick at night, so I don't want to take a full spot. As you can see where I'm parked, is this cool or not? So there he is. So you guys cool with that? Since we're talking about parking, this would be the parking part of the show. I don't know. You know, can you get some sleep? Is there somewhere to park? How much does it cost? On today's episode of How the DOT... <laughs> okay, wait a minute. All right, hold on. Getting crazy. Okay, let's move back. Uh, I present you this. See if you can figure it out. Okay, so we took a look at this. Let me see if I can zoom in any further. Um, I actually, okay, they got the, they got the. Uh, hang on one second. Let's do, let's do that. Let's do that, so we can read it. Okay, so these section numbers. We're gonna try and ask Luke at Glowstone about some of this. But in their ELD webinar, they got into some of the specifics of. There are some man. There are some violations I didn't even know of, even now. So, like when I said earlier, I got some bad news. Yeah, man, there are violations. Dude, man, quit grabbing the screen. There are violations that, I mean, you wouldn't believe. You wouldn't believe. I mean, you know about the instruction manual. I don't know. We're going to get into it. It's crazy, dude. Okay, so preferred ELD. We're still trying to figure that out. Just curious what ELD you're using and is that it oh okay cool awesome i'm a minute early are you kidding me oh my gosh that is cool so i got through the industry news so all right cool so it is now time that is great we're one minute early anybody have anything to say no that would be a no okay so um we're gonna call conrad at my trucking numbers and we're gonna learn more about it is crazy totally crazy and happy birthday, by the way. All right, so let's make a call. Let's do this thing. And let me know if the sound is okay. I try to keep the sound pretty loud. Oh, and this is uh, Rocky Rockefeller's truck. Rocky Rockefeller. That's pretty good truck loading. I like that. Man. Hey, what's up, Conrad? How you doing? I'm doing good, man. Nice to meet you down in Texas. Yes. All right. So we're here to talk about my trucking numbers. So in a nutshell, and by the way, I want to welcome you to the show, Conrad. Thank you for joining me on Auto Transport Intel and taking the time to talk to us. Um, so will you tell us in a nutshell, what is my trucking numbers and how did it come about? All right. Uh, it, it came about out of me. Uh, you know, as a trucker, we were, we were holding loads and, you know, doing our stuff, and I, I, I forgot a couple of, uh, um, load diaries that most truckers have. I forgot that thing somewhere, and, uh, forgot it, and couldn't get it back, and lost a bunch of information. So we started a spreadsheet, and, uh, the spreadsheet turned into, uh, an idea, and a couple of guys started using the spreadsheet, and from there on, it, uh, kind of took off and was helpful. And then we got with uh, a friend of mine who's a developer, and I said, man, can we not develop this into something that we can all use, you know, uh, make it as, as accessible as possible. And so that's a couple of years back, and we developed my trucking numbers. 
isn't it amazing when you you know when you can find the help of a developer to bring your idea to fruition what can happen yeah it, not, not easy to find somebody that can, can see the vision and share it you know and then exactly. and translate what what crazy ideas we can come up with and translate that into a screen yeah so yeah it's not easy so i'm going to bring up the screen here but before i do so uh MyTruckingNumbers.com is a browser-based tool, and it's actually more mobile-friendly than computer-friendly. I've pulled up your website, but really what you want to do is log in on a device. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we're, it's predominantly on mobile devices, and it, so it will also fit to any phone. doesn't matter what size your screen is or whether you're on an iPad or, uh, you know, a tablet, any kind of mobile device, it, it will also fit to that. And that, that applies to Android or iOS, is that right? Correct, yes. Okay, cool. It's not, it's not app based, so you're, you know, you're any web That's right. browser. That's right, it's browser based, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I keep thinking, you know, we think app, right? We just go right in app, but it's browser based. Um, That's and, right. and um, okay, and it's also, you have a 30 day free trial, but. You're making me a special offer tonight, is that right? Yes. So, uh, yeah. for first 10 signups that email you, info at mytruckingnumbers.com, get a year free as long as they mention Auto Transport Intel. That's correct. That is awesome, man. So, let me, so here we go. So, let me show, uh, here we go. I'm going to pull up, I've got an image of my phone here. And let me uh, change my screen here. All right, so I just pulled up the app on my, uh, I've got a projection here with a software I'm using. And you can see that, so you go to mytruckingnumbers.com. Now, I've already logged in, but it's a simple login. Let me, here's my phone. So this is, this is actually, here's my phone. And that is the screen. Where is it right here? This is the screen on this phone right here. So, um, so I can change. It keeps track of your records by week, right? And so I can change. Okay. okay so I'm going to log back in. And it wants to talk about odometer readings for, you know, for starting your week. And it gives you a warning message to try and help keep you on track. But I'm going to look in the archive rather than towards the future. And so um, I, can, I can move left and right per weeks. And my goal here, what's my goal in using this program? I mean, what's the, what's the main purpose of this software? You, as a trucker, you want to keep a, a track of your loads. Number one, everybody does that. And at least most truckers will keep good track, good good records of their loads. Uh, secondly, you wanna you wanna kind of predict where you are in the week. Am I am I running? You know, am I gonna get a paycheck uh, come payday or am I a little bit behind? Uh, and the third thing is you you wanna be keeping track of your of your expenses. The the numbers will tell a picture. The, the numbers will give you an idea of where you stand in the week current, the week back, and coming forward, you know, going into the next week. Because there's, there's really no limit as to how far ahead you can enter loads onto this system. It's, the, the information is just relevant on your side right now. So knowing your numbers sets you up for uh, good decisions going forward. Okay. Yep. Okay. So... So tell me what to do here. I'm in week 14, and let's say I want to go back and look at week 14. Uh, it looks like I can press on maybe the gas pump or the truck, right? Or right. I can. So if yeah, if we if you're in week 14, there the gas pump there is a quick add button to add a fuel stop. So let's say you're at a uh, you're at a gas station, and you know you've got to put fuel in the truck. You you enter that in there. Um, it's quick to, to access, it's quick to open up, you enter your details, the gallons, you enter your uh, price per gallon, any discount that you're getting afforded by whoever it's, um, you know, whoever you're working with, 
to get your, your discounts. Um, transaction fees, that stuff is all pre-entered when you set your account up. If you have a reefer, uh, you guys owning, owning cars, you, you obviously don't have that kind of stuff, but if you do, and you can add, you can customize that. So if you don't have a reefer, you don't add reefer in. You, you can just select that and it won't show on the screen here. If you don't have a truck that runs deaf, you can remove that. So there's various customizable things there. So once you've entered wow. your information, you just click on the little green thumbs up, and that fuel transaction is entered on the relevant week. That is cool. Or the date that you entered. So then, okay, so I can add my fuel. Um, I can also, so then if I click on the truck, that's where my loads are. That's where I can enter a load, right? Correct. So if you want to enter a new load, just go in there, enter all the details submitted by clicking on the little green arrow. And let me show you something real cool. Because you're in historic information here, let me show you something right there. So if you click on the menu button in the top left corner, okay. you get a drop-down list. Cool. All right. Is in week 14, you've got three loads there. Cool. So let's take that first load there that's got the strike through. The number is 20956. Open that one up. Okay. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. So now you've got a whole bunch of information relevant to that specific load. Gives you your line or revenue, your fuel surcharge, your stop pay. Factoring, if you were factoring, or if you were, let's say you were getting a 85, 15% split. Um, you know, the lease company takes 15, you take 85, you would put that number into the factory. Cool. So you've got your loaded miles, your dated miles, that is for your dispatch. Then you can enter as you go your odometer reading for the pickup, which gives you your actual mileage. But the interesting thing is, look down the bottom there where it shows you your estimated fuel cost. That is because you're keeping track of your fuel consumption through this system. It is now using the actual data and applying that to this load and saying to you that this load is paying you $1,600 gross minus $224 in expenses, which is going to the factoring. So your rate per mile is about three a mile. Wow, this is cool, man. And you said, we were talking earlier, so you said that this all started as, because you were keeping notes on the side like every driver does, and you just kept building and making a spreadsheet, and now you got this working app. I mean, this, well, I keep saying app. It's browser-based. This is really cool. That's a lot of detail that you put in here. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been done. Um, we've had a lot of help from, from quite a few guys, a bunch of truckers that got together and helped me testing in the real world while we were developing. Uh, without their help, I don't think we could have done it. Look at, so, you know what? It's, you, it's been interesting. And you know what's cool? When I clicked around on different loads, I like the smooth action of the uh, interface. Um, so, you know, you can tell that a developer put care into the way that it, you know, the screen changed. It's really cool. Okay. So if you want to mark that first load there, if you want to click on that mark as incomplete. Okay. And go back now to the home screen. Nice. And go to week 14. Yeah, this is, a, this is really nice. I like the action. Oh, wow. So the income changed. Exactly. So nice. your little green scroll bar is changed there to that for this week, you have, let's for instance, we're just assuming that that load that you marked is incomplete. It either, number one, it hasn't been paid, or number two, you haven't delivered it yet. So in this situation, now your dashboard has changed to show that your current profit market mar margin for the week is 941.16 and 16 cents. Right. If you were to finish all your loads that you've entered, you're looking at a profit of 2,300 for the week. Wow, so it's almost like um, those progress bars, you know, before you reach 100% on, right. on a goal. Yeah, that's really cool, man. All right, so, so basic things there, 
turn that you're on your dashboard, you can see a 30-day MPG. There's a little finger there. If uh -huh. you tap on that, you've got the selectable option for 30, 60, 90, and 120 days. The same applies to the one next to it, where it says 43 cents. That is your fuel cost. So that, that's the running fuel cost per mile uh, based on your MPG use. Wow, and I can change my... Uh range from 30 to 120 yes and i do see like on the as it as it's known as i learned this is called a hamburger menu with the three lines you click on the hamburger right. menu and you've got a lot of different uh sections to go into i mean you've got a reporting section and man there's a lot here yeah look the three main reasons that a owner operator or a trucker will go out of business is critical health, critical failure of his truck, and the IRS taxes, not paying taxes. Those are the three main reasons drivers go out of business. Say that again. What Say that again. Three main reasons drivers go out of business. Critical health. In other words, the guy gets seriously sick. Right, hell. And he's not able to get back on the road. And for that reason, when the medical bills go add up, he's not earning, he goes out of business. Right. The second reason is going to be critical failure of the truck. And he does not have the resources, or he has got no savings account, to be able to repair his truck and get back on the road within a reasonable time. The third reason is going to be not paying taxes not keeping up with taxes. So, yeah. my trusting numbers That's is good. not an accounting program. I want to make that clear. This is not an accounting system. Okay. People need to keep up with their accounts by using dedicated tax preparers. What my trusting numbers does is gives you a heads up of what's coming at you down the line. So, if you go up to that hamburger menu and you click on allocation, you will notice that on this, you can allocate X amount of funds out of my income nice. for certain things. So in this situation, we've got 25% of the gross revenue allocated towards taxes. That is really smart. That amount can be changed. On maintenance, we've got an older truck, so we're saying 10 cents a mile that we want to allocate towards maintenance. Now, these numbers don't come off my dashboard, but if you were to go to reports and you selected allocation down, way down the bottom, and you took a 12-week reading on that, you get the amount per week that you should be putting into a bank account it covers wow. for your taxes and your maintenance as and when needed. Wow. I'm going to show that again. So if you click, let's go home. So I'm going to go to reports. I'm going to go to allocations. I'm going to go to 12 weeks. Man, there it is. This is awesome. Let's see if I can, I think I can turn it sideways here. Oh, no, that stays vertical. Okay. So there it is. Wow. You know, you're so smart to think of allocations in that way because as a independent business owner, I, I was just talking to someone about this earlier, if you fail to, as you, as you said, allocate some of your gross towards making your tax payments and you don't do that for the whole year, come tax time, I mean, you have a serious problem. Big time. So, Big time. Uh, been there, done that too. I've pretty much been, <laughs> been through everything. And uh, yeah, it is, it's, it's horrendous. It's a mistake that you never make again, or at least this, to, the, right. to the same degree, right? Wow, this is really cool. So let's do this. I've got, uh, I, I allocated a few minutes. Let's bring Brad in here. Uh, Brad is a user, right? Oh, hang on one second. Whoops. You're still there, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Hang on.
So we're calling Brad, and we're going to conference him in. Brad is a user of uh, my trucking numbers, and uh, let's just find out how it's working for him. Hello. Hey, Brad. Welcome to the show. Hey, how you doing? All right, cool. Brad, I have you. Conrad, I have you. Is that right? Well, uh, you're breaking up really, really bad. Yeah. You can't hear us, Brad? Uh, you're, you're breaking up really bad. Breaking up really bad. I'll tell you what, Brad. That, will, will that, you... that was a little bit better, but not much. Hey, Brad, you want to hang up and I'll call you back? Uh, yeah. All right, cool. Let's try that. All right, so, Conrad, I still got you? Yes, sir. All right, let's try them again. I know, Stan, I was just reading your comment. I was thinking the same. That's really detailed. Uh, expanded to keeping keeping general, keeping track of numbers, knowing costs, rates, miles, estimates. Yeah, yeah, you got to pay Corley. Man needs to Hello. get paid. Hello. Hey, can you hear me? That's much better. All right, all right. So I got Brad, I got you. Conrad, I got you. Uh-huh. All right. So, um... All right, so we're just talking to Conrad, and then I brought Brad into the show. Now, Brad, you are using this program now. Is that right? Correct. All right, cool. So um, you are a driver, right? Correct. Are you an independent owner-operator? Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, do you have to – I guess we're just looking at the allocations for tax payments and purposes. Do those functions okay. help your business? Absolutely. This this whole this whole process has helped my business tremendously. Really? What did you do before my trucking numbers? Uh, a spreadsheet that this was built off of. Okay. And I mean, it was it, it, it's off. It's on the same premise. Only this is more user friendly, and you don't have to pull out a bulky computer every day or whatever. This is at your fingertips and. Uh, the, the, the whole app is, is just real simple. It's, it's self-explanatory, and it, 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 it's a number tracker. And, and if you don't know your numbers, you're not going to be successful. Right, and I don't think there's a driver that would dispute what you just said. If you don't know your numbers, you will not be successful. Amen. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, yeah. I don't see how you can. And, and yeah. I've, I've, I've had some good teachers help me to, to realize this and steer me in the right direction. And, and you're talking to one of them. Conrad is one of them. And uh, yeah. if, you, if, if, you, if you can't, if you just don't know, if you don't know what you're making, don't know what you're spending, you're not going to know what your bottom line is. And, you, I mean, y'all were talking just a minute ago about the taxes and all your allocations and stuff. And you've got to know that stuff because... You can you can prepare now for the second quarter three months from now, and if you know what you're putting in there, it's a lot easier to to to, to, to understand it, and and it's a whole lot easier to make it happen. Totally, you know, it's like, it's like one of, I I haven't used it before today. I mean, I haven't even looked at this until really just now. That was one of my goals is to just be like i'm like a fresh new user and right. this is awesome it it seems like it's one of those it would almost be like magic right if you if you'd been doing it the old way and then suddenly you had access to this <laughs> right it's so awesome i that's one of the things i love about software and new technologies is right. it it can transform your business process that that is correct, and and the simpler it is, the easier. I mean, it's just it's elementary. I mean, you want it as simple as you can get it. It's kind of like the old monitor, keep it simple, stupid, you know. So here's a question, Conrad. Can I export this data? At this time, we do not have the export function in there. That is in development and will be provided. Okay. Um, we're, we're working on 
we're working on getting a uh, like a computer or a laptop interface um, linked to this, whereby if somebody wanted to go into more detail, into you know deeper into the report, those reports that we've got there are designed specifically for display on a cell phone, and they're just a quick heads up. But let's say somebody wanted to dig into this, because the historic data is there. The data will never go away. It sits there for as long as you use it. So if you're on the system for two, three, four years, you can go back into this and look at everything and put it all into one report and say, well, you know what, every year in January, I my numbers drop. You know, second oh, half yeah. of, the, of, of the first quarter, my numbers are going down, and I, and I take a beating, and that's every year. So that export functionality is going to be developed. It's not there right now, but it's on the way. Yeah, no, and that's no doubt. I mean, uh, it's seeing trends over time is also really helpful no matter what business you're in. Um, but especially if you're, you know, if you are reliant on, you have a you have a flat rate, a flat variable rate of something like fuel, and you depend on maybe peak season um, for, you know, to really make most of your gross, you really need to be able to see and measure those trends. So, um, so here we go. So I'm looking at your page. Okay, this is, um, this is $30 a year normally with a 30 day free trial, but you are going to give the first 10 new signups that mention auto transport Intel a whole free year. Is that right? That's correct. All right, so they got to email you info at mytruckingnumbers.com. Now, that, that goes for right now. We're live right now, but if you're watching this on demand in the YouTube archive, you might go ahead and send him an email. I don't know if he's getting those emails or if he's reached 10. So if you like this app, um, you know, you're looking at it right here on my phone, and then here it is. You know, I'm showing it on the screen. Um, if you like this, go ahead and get your free year and uh, send Con Conrad an email. And I want to thank both you guys for coming on the show and talking about this. I hope it helps promote my trucking numbers for you. Um, I found it interesting t just to look at it and uh, move around. It's really easy to use. And I mean, I really like it. I think this is awesome. Crickets. No, I'm just kidding. Um, listen, I want to thank you guys. I'm going to go into my next segment. So... Thanks for joining me. Keep in touch. Let me know if you get some signups, and hopefully you guys become new subscribers and keep watching the show. I really appreciate it. Jay, thank you very much, and thanks for what you do out there. Um, you know, uh, truck, trucking and trucking uh, truckers to keep our country moving forward, and to the That's drivers right. out there, keep the shiny side up, brother. Thank you much. I, I appreciate that. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, see ya. Pretty cool. Very cool. Um, there is a lot of technology out there. And actually, one of the things I was thinking about today was that um, hopefully in looking at other people's technology, we you know look at our own technology, look at other people's technology and think, ah, oh, gosh, you know, I really need to keep moving forward with whatever it is my original goal was. Um, I think competition is a healthy thing. And um, there are so many segments that require good technology to further um, making something easier, better, and faster that, uh, I don't know, it seems like it's just, it's a great, it's a great thing to be in right now because it seems like it's really early on. Uh, if you look at car hauling software, I mean, we, you know, in one respect, we look at paper as the stone age. But when we look at even just 20 years from now, dude, we're in the Stone Age. I'm pretty sure. It's awesome. So, um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens next with my trucking numbers. So, um, all right, let's do this. Let's go on to our next segment. Um, we'll come back to my show here for a second. And we are going to, oh, man, I'm only one minute late. Yes. Um, did anybody have anything, uh, I've been, I was looking at the chat, it's moving kind of slowly, which is cool, it doesn't bother me at all, it means we're, uh, I think, I, I have this feeling that we're, we're absorbing information when things are kind of moving slowly, right? 
It's when we're bored and fidgety that, you know, hey, what's going on? You know, or whatever. I don't know. So, hey, anybody play Fortnite, by the way? Oh, my gosh. I'm hooked on that. Oh, it's crazy. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to build. I'm trying to shoot. And I'm trying to run. Then I, you know, it's crazy. Anyways, you got to check that out. Fortnite is crazy. Okay, let's move on. Um, and I don't think we're going to search any loads tonight, but maybe later. You know, if you, uh, you know, we've got the top five load boards here. And if you need something searched, you know, you can, you can always let me know. But now we're going to move on to uh, Glowstone. I'm going to give Luke a call, and we're going to talk about what is Glowstone. All right, here we go. Reach over here and get my phone. Jay, is this how you normally make calls? No, the answer is no. That'd be crazy. Every time I make a phone call, I gotta reach over, get a hernia, maybe. Not. Hey, Jay. Hey, how you doing, Luke? Welcome to the show. Glad to be on. Thanks for having me. All right. So you are live on Auto Transport Intel. And um, we got the live chat going. And hopefully you've got um, the show pulled up on a screen with the volume down so you can kind of see as we talk. Because we're going to talk about a lot of stuff. Um, you, yeah, had, you moderated an ELD webinar today at 1 o'clock Pacific time. That's correct. Okay, and I was there, and um, every time I do a live webinar, I've been in maybe, I don't know, half a dozen so far. Um, but every time I hear about one, I sign up, and I'm, I'm there. Uh, and in fact, when you include freight webinars and other educational webinars, I've probably done dozens. And today, hearing it's Dave Gray is the president of Glowstone, is that right? That's correct. All right, so... Um, you introduced him, and he went into some specifics and common ELD errors and other areas like that that I thought was really informative because it's the minutia that is the tough part, right? Exactly. And the reason you had the ELD mandate webinar is because Glowstone Trucking Solutions is a carrier compliance provider. Is that right, too? That's correct. And basically, we make sure we help carriers stay compliant with all the federal regulations that are out there. So that's specifically what we do. We're also a, a reseller of uh, Geotab, a DLD, and, uh, and I mean, yeah, exactly. We, the, we always focus on the latest in, in the rules and regulations, trying to help uh, companies stay compliant. And, you know, were we excited for the ELD rules to come out? You know, not always, but uh, it, it's here to stay. It's in the rules, and we have to help carriers with it. And so, yeah. uh, moving forward, it's it's, uh, it's been a learning curve for a lot of carriers, a lot of drivers. Right. I mean, and that's the thing. I, mean, they, I think we're past. I hope we're past the period of hope that it's going away. But I think there's probably still, <laughs> maybe I don't know, ten five percent of the trucking industry still is hoping it goes away. Maybe. Uh, I'm sure it's even more than that that are hoping right. for sure. But yeah. uh, ever since April 1st with the full enforcement deadline, we were expecting a big, um, a lot of phone calls coming into the office, um, you know, wondering if or, or will it come uh, into play. And it sounded like we were going to get a whole lot of phone calls like we did in December, and we did not. It was actually a sort of a quiet uh, April 1st, and uh, I think... I think carriers are understanding and drivers are understanding that it's here for those that are required to have it. Yeah. And, uh, and, and now it's just learning what to do with it. And, and really, it's how can we improve the hours of service regulations now that the ELD is sort of highlighting the strictness of these regulations. You know, it's interesting. I, I felt the same silence. I've been talking about ELD for weeks. Uh, actually, months, uh, probably since, I don't know, October. And the first time I heard of ELD was a year ago. So, um, I, yeah, I felt like it's been kind of quiet. 
And I think that's showing during the soft enforcement because now we're into hard enforcement, right? Exactly. Strict now, enforcement? Yeah, it's, it's basically out of service, uh, you know, uh, uh, auditors, and um, they, they can they can place you out of service for any violations that you have, but specifically around the uh, If you don't have an ALD and you should, um, you know, if your hours aren't, aren't right, um, yeah, they're going to place you out of service now. Yeah. And so... I guess it seems like a lot of people just blew right through, just like blowing a scale, blew right through the pre-December grace period, or blew kind of right through soft enforcement, and are like just hitting the wall of out-of-service enforcement, right? Exactly. They thought, hey, with this, you know, three months delay of enforcement, hey, I don't need to get my ELD until the end of March or you know, the first bit. Maybe it'll still go away, but um, it, it, that's not happening, and uh, it's here to stay, and and now it's how can we deal with it? How can we use it to our advantage even, and, and then how can we change the rules and regulations after the fact and, and improve um, the hours of service that a lot of drivers are, are dealing with, with issues. Where paper logs, it was a little bit easier to manipulate or some gray areas to make sure you fit into your miles uh, and hours and and now uh, you can't do that very well and and as it's pointed out the problem is not eld the problem is if there's a problem it's hours of service so which is a way of shifting i mean to me it's you know it's it's really in the same box but I guess within the box, if you want to move the cup around, you can. ELD, HOS, the ELD is just a device. It's the hours of service, which is the way you enforce rules of measurement that maybe need to be amended. And as Dave Gray pointed out today, uh, that, as we know, Representative Babin in Texas, who seems to be leading the charge to amend this uh, in a legislature, which is the only place that's going to happen, even if he's successful, and that's even if he is successful, it would still take at least a year to um, put that into law and effect, right? Exactly, yeah. Once, you know, there's an implementation date, uh, which is, you know, after the, the rule comes into effect, then there's like the implementation date, uh, which is usually a year or sometimes two for the rule, uh, for really helping carriers get ready to it. I mean, it's sort of like with the ELDs, uh, really ELDs was around 2012, 2013, I think, when they first were pushing it through the system. And, and uh, when it finally became law, they gave it a two-year grace period. Um, and, uh, and, and so, yeah, even if or when regulations do pass, it's going to be another at least 12 months before that positive change is, is, is felt which, in the trucking industry. Which means that my super safe, super Kool Aid product is probably going to be really popular for at least a year. Exactly. Uh, see, when I get mad about ELDs, I turn to my super safe, super Kool Aid, and I feel better. <laughs> <laughs> if only it was that easy. Yeah, exactly. Oh man, you know, and I, and that thing is oh, and here, I don't know if you've seen this. This is my uh, ELD egg timer product, because why do you? Here's the thing: is it's the 30 minute break that really makes people crazy, um, and I understand that. And I, I, it seems like, oh my gosh, Dave Williams, Dave Williams is. Uh, so here's the here's the rule of super chat. The super chat rule exists in YouTube. If you get a super chat, you you try to drop everything and acknowledge where you got the super chat from. Dave Williams is um, uh, rapidly becoming a good friend as well as a driver that I do dispatch for and work with, and it's growing into uh, a great thing because we just I just put up another video with Dave called David Odessa. And you gotta watch it. Um, Dave has great uh, phrases that he, I, I don't know if he just comes up with this stuff or what, but he, um, he, he really has a great way of expressing the pieces of the job that you need to do 
and when you communicate well with others can be something that gets you to point B rather than, you know, in a situation. And I'll tell you what, I would love to make a video with Dave at the DOT. Now that would be a killer video. Um, so thank you, Dave, for the super chat. I really do appreciate it. And, um, uh, and so uh, thank you. Um, what we were talking about, Luke, so the last thing before I start talking about Dave is, uh, what did I say? I do that all the time. I say, what was I talking about? I start. Uh, you know, the, you know, the enforcement, the changes that, you know, with hours of service that might come later. And I know yeah. Oh, the, the, the 30, 30 minute break. break. Okay. So the 30 minute break, see, like, I mean, like me, I get on a track, I'm focused, I'm ready to go. And then what happens if you suddenly, my, my little robot device says, oh, it's time to stop, Jay. Got to take a 30 minute break. But I'm not ready. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm up. I'm ready to go, man. I'm ready to go. But I got to take a 30 minute break because the robot says so. And I really feel like, and I, I mean, I, maybe, you know, maybe I'll be lucky enough to, uh, you know, speak to Congress. No, I don't want to do this. But if, if I did the 30 minute break, what happens if we all get little 30 minute robots to tell us we need 30 minute breaks? because we're in the middle of our 30 minute day, because we need to be 30 minutes safe. I mean, seriously, man, right? Do you, do you see that too? Is Am I alone on this? Oh, no, I mean, the, the 30 minute break, I mean, you know, it's, it's crazy because before it was, I mean, really it all comes, comes down to the time management. You know about when you're gonna have your break. You should be planning for that. It's, the ELB is going to help you or is going to force you to be better with your time management, planning where you're going to be at at a certain time, um, and, and preparing yourself uh, for these situations. And the biggest issue with the 30 minute break is with paper logs, you can sort of have a seven and a half minute uh, grace period basically where um, you know, the, the logs are only in these 15 minute chunks. Um, and so if you're, you know, just short of that 15 minute or, you know, 30 minute break, you know, you, you can start at seven and a half minutes earlier and, and, you know, seven minutes later after that 30 minute break and really have like a 40 some minute break. But, uh, <laughs> oh, be, no, I don't want to calculate this. I mean, it'll take 30 minutes to calculate the 30 minute break, right? It's so it, it's unrealistic. Not, the biggest issue, too, with ELBs is unlike this seven and a half minute kind of grace period with paper logs, it's going by, you know, you got 30 seconds and it'll round up. Like if you if you take a break and it's 29 minutes, yeah. you're going to be not in compliance because there's a viol potential violation for not taking a long enough break. Now that's 29 minutes. <laughs> It seems like it should be. Come on! The ELDs round oh up. Gosh. 30 seconds. So, yeah, it's. Uh, it's ELDs and, are going to be very strict with, with you and know, hours, drive time, and, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not fun. And that's the thing. Like, okay, like Nadia is talking about traffic. I mean, yeah, well, what if you're in a traffic jam and your 30 minute break is, is, is right there? And what do you do? Just pull over, stop the truck? I mean,. Well, luckily, luckily there are exemptions with um, if it's an unexpected traffic uh, traffic jam, then yeah, I mean you got two hours. Uh, you just gotta put in your notes and, and annotate. But uh, you got two hours to to you know with an unexpected event to um, finish your load or get to where you need you know take a break or what have you. Um, but if it's something like it's a weather uh, delay or if it's uh, you know you're going to be driving through, in my case, Portland, Oregon, uh, during during heavy heavy traffic uh, at, at 5 p.m. I mean, you knew that was going to be bad, so you should have prepared for it. And SMTSA is going to just be. You should have thought of that. On all of it. And that's a, and that's a, yeah. see, and that's a, I guess that's part of the problem is that when you look at, you look at the way pieces of society function, um, with the traffic and the road rage and the parking and the gas pumps. And I mean, there's so many things 
that add up to enough problems that, and we've seen the videos to, if, to, to be, if I was in front of a DOT officer saying, oh, well, you're 30 seconds off, it's a violation. I think, you know, I think I'd freak out a little bit. <laughs> luckily, luckily, one of the big stigmas that was, uh, was thought about is these DOTs. They'll let you know as a driver, hey, you're in potential violation. Hey, you're in potential violation. Um, and they worry that that's what the inspector will see. But that is not what the inspector is going to see. They won't see these red flags of potential violation. They're going to see the normal... Um, um, you know, hours that you, you know you have, and they'll have to sift through it like they normally had to do uh, to find any violation. And so, um, you know, that stigma of hey, they're going to automatically be notified to look here for a violation. That's not the case. Uh, so, which is at least uh, a little bit better. We'll get to that point. I hope not, but uh, it's not in the world now. So, so, all right. So, I like what you just said. Is uh, I want to move into some of the ELD webinar from today. Now, full disclosure, I did a few screen captures of your slides. Do you mind if I show those? Completely fine. Okay. If, if cool. anybody wants to watch the whole webinar, it's on our uh, Goldstone YouTube channel. You and can check it out there. Let's do that. And bef that's right. So, I'm I, I'm glad you said that. So, if you want to watch that video on demand. Uh, Glowstone uh, in YouTube. Go to Glowstone Trucking Solutions and uh, first make sure you subscribe. Uh, let me turn that sound down. And um, if you click on the video section, that's what I like to do. So then you see the video first. And if you guys can see this, let me uh, make this a little smaller here. So we're in the Glowstone YouTube channel right now. And let me just hit the back button. You guys know what you're doing. Go to type in Glowstone on YouTube and you will find the Glowstone Trucking Solutions channel. Click on that and then you go to their home page. You can click on videos and that's where you can see a list of thumbnails of the videos. And right here, the first one, ELDs, it's past April 1st, now what? Okay, and you can just click on that. And that is a one-hour, seven-minute video presentation of uh, your ELD webinar today. Is that right? That's correct. Cool. And so I think uh, I think I'm referenced in there. I asked you a couple questions at the end of it. So yeah, that's correct. pretty exciting stuff. <laughs> okay. Hey, so let's go to your slides. I don't want to kill any more time because I've killed plenty of time and trees. Okay, so let's go to ELD violations. ELD violations in SMS. Let's go back to that. If you can see that, and let's uh, let's go ahead. I don't need that. I know what I look like. Let's see these. Uh, um, all right. So I liked this slide because you dive into some of the specific sections and the violation description. And these are what your, well, I guess, first of all, 395.8 through 395.8, 395.9, these are all ELD specific violations. Is that right? That's correct. Okay, cool. All right, so, or, or okay, not cool. Um, because there, <laughs> Because there are, and it's no secret that I don't like EL, I don't like ELD. So anybody that wonders, I am I'm being specific now. But again, don't hate the messenger, right? Hate the rule. If you're gonna hate yeah, anything. That's the same with us. Yeah. Uh, you know, we help we help drivers and companies stay compliant with the regs. We might not like the regs, but we still have to help you stay compliant with with the ELD rules and regs. So. Yes. Um, and then this list of violations, I mean, uh, there's some common ones in here that, at least at the beginning, um, you know, it's going to be simple mistakes that, uh, that'll cost you. Right. Um, and I mean, here it is. Okay, so I'm going to leave that on the screen for a minute. So we got specific ELD violations. Let's count it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. 
and some of the most more common ones we're going to go to that slide here in a minute but talking about not having the user manual um does not having paper logs yeah does yeah uh does not having paper logs fall on this 22 that's separate yeah so, so blank paper logs you're supposed to have seven days worth of blank paper logs in the truck so just in case there is some issue with the ELV device you can still track it with with paper okay um and then you've got um yeah so now that was that was really interesting 395.28 failed to select deselect or annotate a special driving category or exempt status so as dave was talking about if you have a special driving status you need to annotate it and actually it's really beneficial to the driver to do that right exactly and it's like in your paper log you might you might write something in the note section there and it's you just and we've seen drivers they're being really good on this and it's annotating basically anything when there's some issue that maybe you don't understand it's a DLP, but you're going to you're going to annotate something because it's going to be off so the big line especially is like hey there's a landslide and it's obviously unexpected um that's why i'm driving you know 13 hours today instead of 11 hours and uh, at which you will see that the inspector will see 13 hours of drive time that day but you'll have it noted um, that it was because there was some unexpected event and and that's why the, the log looked that way okay all right so now let's go to let's go to your common errors slide because this really uh this helps kind of distill um, you know, we just looked at the macro view of the rules, and now here we can at least try and start to narrow down some of the simpler things that we could possibly do correctly. So, um, the logging out and logging in, that's interesting. So that's something that, I mean, that I guess that happens a lot, where you have, oh, I got graphics. I guess it happens a lot where you've got a situation where does a driver log in and log out every day let me ask you that yes yes and so you know we we as geotab resellers we have our own tech um uh, department who will handle all the phone calls uh, and help help with you know any issues with the elds um that they're having and you know so we get we get phone calls every day on hey this happened or why why does it look like this and the most common issue is they're not logging out at the end of the day. So wow. you finish your drive and, and uh, you know, finish what you need to do. They don't log off. They sleep, get up, and because they didn't log off and they didn't change from basically on-duty to off-duty, then it, it thinks you're on-duty that whole time. And so when you log in again in the morning, um, you're, you're out of hours. And... They're going to go, what the heck, I, I need to start working, i got to start driving. And they're out there saying I'm out of hours. Why is this? It's because you didn't log off or you didn't switch to off-duty, and, uh, and it's, it's still tracking that on-duty time. Now, there's, it's a simple fix for the back office. If you've got a, a fleet of drivers, um, you know, in the back office, you can, you can make those changes that, and make a note saying, oops, I forgot to do this, and it should be fine uh, if an inspector takes a look at it. But... Uh, but yeah, so locking out is really the biggest issue because it's just getting used to the day by day process. Okay. And how does a driver get used to that? What do you have any tips on how a driver could get used to this new process? Before December, we would tell them get used to it. Get the DLV device before December. <laughs> uh, get the DLV device before the implementation date. Uh, or before the enforcement date, and just get used to it for a month. It's not going to be something you're going to learn over, you know, overnight. Yeah. And, uh, and get used to it. You know, we we, we advise. Obviously, that that can't happen now. But we right. advise people: hey, do paper logs and do the ELD side by side. See how the ELD works. How it sort of differs or, or compares to your paper logs, and then. When the implementation date hits, you're you're used to it and you're good to go. But now that it's in enforcement, really it's just getting in there, getting used to it, practicing, um, and you're going to come across this 
maybe weird things, you know, talk to other drivers, figure, figure it out, and uh, unfortunately that, that's the learning curve you have now, is just getting used to it um, as, as, you know, as in, for fleets we always told, uh, uh, you know, hey, the, the most tech savvy or your best driver, get them on the ELD device first, and then help, let them help teach it. And so if you've got some, some, some wise truck drivers who've been using ELDs for a while, Pick their brain, and then, uh, and then, uh, you know, get practicing on it. And I got to tell you, that's that's actually one of the reasons why. So uh, October, November, December, I was talking about ELDs because I knew it wasn't going away. I mean, I just, I don't know. It felt like one of those government programs that is just not going to go away, and that's what's happening, and that's fine. But I, I was trying to implore people to to learn more and now that we're here now that we're in april at out of service enforcement um it seems like it can't be talked about enough i know it's boring but that's why i attend the webinar i mean it's look these eld rules are kind of boring aren't they all rules and regulations are boring <laughs> sure. but, uh, and i, I guess uh, that's one what... mistake and it's it's several grand right there i mean Right. The issue is if you get any violation with, say, not having an ELD, which you should have known about for years now. Um, should have known about that. If, if you should have known about it. <laughs> you know, say, two grand violation. Um, and and really, for one driver, one truck, you know, you're looking at maybe 500 bucks for that year. So uh, it's not worth the violation to not have it. Right. So, um Moving on, so, well, what I did was I took some notes of Dave Gray's presentation. I'm just going to read a couple things that I wrote down. He said, uh, two biggest issues are uh, that lead to violations are not understanding the software or having trouble with it, just as we're talking about logging in and logging out, and number two, not understanding the rule of the law which essentially we're just talking about. And those are the two main issues. And I mean, in a nutshell, I mean, that makes sense. If there is a nutshell. Because the thing is, then as he kept talking, I mean, you know, there are so many areas to um, to understand. The bring your own device. Um, because some ELD programs, right, you bring your own device. But the connectivity issues between the devices and the software. And then you got the front end, you got the back end. I mean, you know, and that's another, that's another thing that I... I'm imploring the FMCSA to at least acknowledge, you know, uh, we're, all, we're actually trying to run a trucking business here. This is not an exercise in irritating technology, right? As Dave yeah. said in the video, you don't, get play, you don't get paid to play with the equipment. And that, I mean, you know, I, I don't know why we can't all understand that. I totally get that. That is actually one of my biggest concerns right away. When I heard about ELD a year ago, I thought, really? Oh, my gosh. This is insane. You can't throw this new technology into the mix and then lay down these hard rules. I mean, you can, but you shouldn't. That's just not good for... Oh my gosh, where do I start? It's not good for the people. It's not good for the logistics. It's not good for society. I don't know what all other ramifications it's going to result in other than seriously weird accidents on the interstate, right? You can have the craziest accidents. You're going to have crazy right. fights in parking lots. I mean, it's. <laughs> oh, man. Well, that's, what, that's what's funny is they, they put these EOD laws out there to. You know, they're, of course, the FMCSA is all about safety, um, and, and they claim the ELD should save 20 lives every year and, like, four or 500 uh, injuries every year. Uh, but we all know either that's not, you know, they might claim that's the main story, but that's, that's not it. I mean, we all know that the large mega carriers and, um, you know, the like APA and the big organizations out there that are pushing for, you know, they're, they're happy with this. It's, uh, it's, it's yeah, being able to I'm sure. have their drivers accountable. But for the owner operators, which is maybe like 80 percent of trucking, um, I mean, you're looking. You know, it's it's just an extra cost on top of. It is exactly the minor. Not to mention the tiny profit that they make. It, you know, unless they're really good. So. 
Not to mention all the problems, but then there's the added expense. Uh, now that I've calmed down, I'm going to try and keep moving. Um, signatures and unassigned driving. And the log vial, that's, and that's considered a false log. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so there's, and we're seeing that a lot. I mean, sometimes drivers, you know, uh, oh, gosh, something screwed up, and, and, uh, and, oh, no, something else screwed up, and then they realize, you know, 10, 15 things, that there's logs that they haven't um, either assigned or they haven't approved the logs. You're supposed to approve it, you know, after, after the end of the day or, or before you start in the morning, it should pop up saying you still need to approve what you did yesterday, um, let alone, you know, any changes that is made to your day um, that uh, the edits, you know, for like say if you're on duty or off duty, and you can't change the drive time, but you can change, you know, the on duty, off duty type of stuff. Um, I mean, you got to approve all of those as well. And so if there's unassigned logs, hey, this should be on this person, um, you know, uh, it's it's going to be causing it's causing issues now, and people need to get ahead of it. Um, get on top of it. The people on the back end, if, if you're lucky to have that, um, need, I mean, it's another, you know, thing is, is the EOP on the back end for these companies, it, it can be a full-time job, and, and yeah. there's another added expense. But. Well, exactly. I mean, and that's the thing is, who is in charge of knowing all these regulations and how to work the software? I mean, is I don't know. I mean, the driver looks at the dispatcher, and then they look at each other, and you know, it's like uh, light. It's like a life is hell uh, animated series. Um, yeah, I mean, sometimes take the compliance managers, what have you, in there. But uh, I and mean, that's why. That's why. Glowstone. That's right. At Glowstone, you do this, don't you? Yeah, we we help you know handle the back end to a degree. Uh, you know, we're not going to be the person who's actually verifying uh, things, but we do right. have a, a, a driver, if there's an error, we'll, we'll go back in there and, 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 and fix it. Or, um, you know, we manage, even if you don't have whatever ELB device you use, the biggest, the biggest thing, we, we talk a lot about cons, but there's a lot of pros that can be taken from the ELB, and we help you get, you know, figure what those pros are and that's the thing is if you can write if you can uh if you can begin to navigate what would otherwise be the issues that i'm raising then you can turn this tool into a productivity accelerator correct exactly right exactly. i mean and, that, and then just some of the other rules not understanding the rules uh not un not respecting the 30 second ear of ELD increment rounding, um, understanding team driving, um, that you can't do driving. And yard moves right. Are miserable. Uh, and right that's, now. yeah, I, I did a show on personal conveyance about a month ago. So, and just for the fact that I see, that's what I see. I see personal conveyance as a cornucopia of, you know, just a long list of scenes of a DOT officer talking to a driver saying okay now what were you doing here i just this doesn't make sense while well, i was on personal conveyance yeah but let's talk about that right why don't you why don't you step into my office and explain it to me exactly and and you know we're being told right now that you know the inspectors auditors they're looking at that and they know that that's an issue and they're going to be poking and digging deeper into those um and in fact i think I don't know if it was the FMCSA, but we're hearing a lot of basically recommending if you can, don't don't advise your driver to use personal conveyance. That's up to the company to use personal conveyance or not. Uh, there's more issues that can come out of it than than, than potential benefits. But uh, otherwise, you've got to be very good at teaching your, your drivers exactly how to use it and when you use it, um, and then having documentation to prove that you know you're not trying to move closer to to your end goal um while driving uh, while on personal conveyance things like that so. right right and that if you so if you do do personal conveyance or anything any special status make sure you have plenty of annotations which again man exactly. i mean during the day you know i mean you get a couple phone calls and a couple emails 
and you try to take notes of everything, that can be very difficult. I realize that you're driving a truck and this should be your, your main focus, but I, would, I, I implore the FMCSA to understand that by adding the ELD, you have just made this job even more complicated than it already is. Which maybe if when we get to mind reading solutions, God help us. But when we do get to, because those are coming. I don't know if you, I mean, I don't want to put on a tinfoil hat, but mind reading solutions are coming. And when they're here, maybe that will help. Under Maybe the ELD will just be reading your mind and, and, and you won't have to annotate. And that way you can save the time of annotating. It'll just be reading your mind. So that'll be beneficial. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> oh man, I'm telling you, I can't wait to do the mind reading show. Um, that's coming. Uh, let's see here. So, so, yeah. you know, real quick, we're talking yeah. about you know, uh, you know, people aren't understanding the hours of service rules. Well, hopefully you guys real about, realize that the ELD mandate didn't change any hours of service rules. I know. It changed how you're logging it. And so all the hours of service rules are the same. Um, it's just you know, if, if you already are used to being a long haul driver, for example, and you know the rules and you use a gray area to manipulate it, you still know the rules and uh, and you should be fine understanding uh, the changes. But the big issue we're seeing is the private carriers, the construction companies, the, um, um, you know, uh, insulation contractors, what have you, uh, they're dealing with, you know what, trucking, uh, the, the truck and the rules and regulations around that, they're not the experts. Maybe they should be, but they're not the experts on that. They're the experts on construction, and uh, and they're the ones having the biggest issue of not knowing exactly, hey, am I actually, uh, do I have to have an ELD? And what is um, the short haul exemption, um, you know, 100 air mile, 150 air miles, what, you know, these, these details, these things that um, you know, maybe they realize they, they didn't even need to be tracking their paper laws as frequently as they, they are. So there's just a lot of a lot of new things like that that are popping up for, for companies, and uh, and we have to walk them through that whole process. Yeah. Man, I mean, it's amazing. There's, we could go on forever. I'm going to keep you. I'll tell you, do me a favor. So it's 930 Central. I want to keep you for, let's budget, maybe 20 more minutes. You guys with me? Can we do 20 minutes? 20 minutes time. I think I'm going to do that to kids. Kids are in bed. So Kids are in bed. All right, cool, man. Awesome. Did you read them their ELD bedtime story? <laughs> and they fell asleep. Right away. <laughs> right away. <laughs> oh, I got to tell you, frankly, I at one point, I think it was a year ago, I started working on an ELD bedtime story. So I have to dig that up. Uh, <laughs> like be, it. <laughs> be a huge hit, man. Kids sleeping all over the place. Um, let's see here. What I want to read. Okay. So we talked about annotations, um, drivers thinking they are exempt personal conveyance. Um, we talked about representative Babin detention time. I wanted to talk about detention time because th this is, this is a direct conflict. I like detention time, but you know, you've got to grab a shipper now and say, man, you owe me for that five hours of making me sit there, and I got a device to prove it. Just like you said, well, HOA, hours of service have been the same all the time. ELD didn't change any of that. Well, on the same token, shippers have been holding up drivers forever, but maybe haven't been very accountable. And so this isn't this where the rubber meets the road of detention time? Yeah, we, we wrote a, I, I wrote a specific article on this topic, but this is one of the, I mean, you can call it smaller benefits, but the ELD is going to give the drivers the power to be able to prove that they should have known that, you're at, uh, that you were, you know, near your hours of service uh, at grad time and, and you need to rest and you need to rest. Um, Preferably on their property because you can't you can't drive away and if if you have proof of your ELD tracking and you annotated that you told them that um, I mean uh, luckily FMCSA put in a process to you know put put up your information um, and tell your story and, and show what you have and and uh, they'll walk through that process to make sure that that shipper is 
um, uh, being held accountable for, for sending you off. Um, however, the big issue is if drivers do this a lot, you know how the government works. It's going to be slow. Um, you know, it, it, is that process uh, that they currently have in place going to work efficiently enough? We will see, but I, I doubt it right now. But at least there is a process in place to hold shippers and, and brokers accountable. And, and they are actually uh, knowing that this is happening. And a lot of times the, the side effect is shippers and, and, and brokers are going to be a little bit more strict on, hey, you need to have an ELB. Do you have an ELB? Prove that you have an ELB. Okay, now I'll work with you. Um, if you're trying to get around the system or if you're trying to, uh, things like that. But if you don't have an ELB, um, there's, there's potentially uh, an effect there as well to um, right. you can hold you accountable as well. And you can use your ELD to get the job. Uh, and do and, you know different things again using the ELD to your benefit um, but I, I was I was very interested in this talk because now one thing I want to say is that in car hauling I mean we don't we don't really have driver detention because right. you get to the dealership or the auto auction or whatever the pickup location is you have to do the work you have to load the car you have to present the gate pass find the car all that stuff you're not sitting there waiting. So this is really a freight world, dry van, reefer, right, um, issue where you're waiting to be loaded. Yeah, you're right. Okay. So, but having said that, I mean, it's still, since, you know, I, I get, this is auto transport intel. I'm talking about everything auto transport. But with an ELD since it's overlapping to all areas of transportation logistics. I mean, like you just talked about construction, and um, Dave gave the example, what was that, a mining company that had, like, all these dynamite infractions? That was actually a pretty interesting story. Um, that, uh, uh, I mean, yeah, you've got many areas where the ELD, I think, kind of changes what was other, other, otherwise brushed under the carpet kind of issue. And that's why I raised driver detention because it seems to be bringing a lot of things to the surface. And again, exactly. hours of service, right? You could get you could get by. Um, and and a, one of the reasons I think that's important to point out too is it just seems like such a quick the the switch really did get flipped quick. I I realize for the government it wasn't fast enough, and I also know that I've read material of the AOBRD, and this stuff dates way back. I mean, you know, what? AOBRD is what? Is that 10 years ago? I believe so. Right? And so it's a long time ago. But when we consider, uh, you know, you just talked about Representative Babin, and it'll take a year for that to be implemented. Why... Did we have to go from here's an ELD to you're out of service so fast? Why was that necessary? You know, if, if you were to ask the FMCSA that, they'd say you've known ahead of time. You should have. Um, you know, and I'm sure in their mindset they'd be like, hey, uh, we gave you a grace period, but you know that grace period was also for the FMCSA and the and the inspectors to get on the same page and, and prepare themselves for it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, you know it this, was eventually going to come, and I, I, you know, I can't answer that question specifically and, in, and, in my mind. And, and, I, and I, that's right. And that's, un, that's an unfair question for me to ask you. Um, but I, I raise it, I, I raise it to the universe because it just, it seems like there, this is where, again, I put on my tinfoil hat. I wonder, what's the bigger picture agenda? Because this needed to happen. This needed to happen at this time so that something else bigger can happen. That's just my belief. And I guess I'm just waiting for the other shoe to drop, i.e. mind reading solutions. I don't know. <laughs> You're right. I mean, it's, it's at least moving... Um you know, the trucking industry into the, if you want to call it the 21st century, if you want to call it, you know, the, the digital age, but, um, you know, there's there's a lot of positive capabilities that can come from this. It 
highlights a lot of the strict issues with hours of service, so hopefully we can fix that side of things. Um, you know, something to think about, too, is, you know, right now we have these ELD devices. I think there's 100 um, ELD providers technically on the FMCSA list. <laughs> right, 100. Think, yeah? Yeah, and I don't, you know, I don't even Holy think cow. the FMCSA realize there's going to be that many. And you got to think about the inspectors that they have to deal with huge variety of these devices where you only have to deal with one. But, uh, but what's coming is, I think I saw one of your commenters at the beginning uh, when I jumped on is, well, what's going to happen is these devices are going to be manufactured in vehicles. Where, you know, the manufacturer of Volvo is going to have a specific, hey, maybe we like Geotab, we're going to put them in all our trucks, and, uh, and it'll be that way. It's going to eventually get to that point, um, but, uh, but right now it's just this plugging under the dashboard uh, sort of pack that, uh, that, has been in, that is in place. So um, the trucks are getting smarter. Yes, we know the, you know, Tesla and the automation um, in the trucking industry, it's not going to take everything, but that intelligence is, is coming and coming quick. Well, and it's interesting. I mean, that's another thing. I Honestly, I, I think about if I was a DOT officer and I had to, on a daily basis, run into 20 to 30 plus different solutions, and that's a conservative number because you just said there could be 100 out there. I mean, how? what's that got to be like? I, I, I can't wait. Listen, if you're watching this show and you're a DOT officer and I just reached your thought, please come on my show and talk to me about what that has got to be like. I, I can't imagine. That sounds horrible. I mean... Yeah, and we, we had a former DOT inspector uh, as our safety uh, department manager in the office for several years. And, and, you know, his perspective is, I mean... ELDs, AOBRDs, they've been out there for a while now. Right. And so they, they've seen them coming through. They're, they're getting used to it. But the, I, I hugely respect, say, like the owner-operator who's not only having to deal with ELDs, all these rules and regs, getting there on time, making sure that they're taking their breaks. But these inspectors have to be trained so well on yeah. a wide variety of ELDs the, the newest changes in rules and regs, dealing with the drivers um, and enforcing enforcing these rules, you know, it's, it's the respect level that I have for the inspectors. Yeah, some of them are going to treat you not well. Drivers, some of you aren't going to treat the inspectors well, but uh, but you know, I think I think if you guys can respect each other and what you guys have to go through, it's insane. Yeah, I I agree with that statement. So. I do want to, before I, before I forget, because I want to spend a few minutes on this, um, number one, if you go to Glowstone.com, and I advise that you do, go to Glowstone, let me take me off the screen here, go to Glowstone.com, and there is a lot up here. First of all, you got your phone number up here, of course, so you can be contacted with questions or if you want to um, find out more about your services, but if you're just looking for more information, click on blog. And then, whoops, uh, hover blog, and then click on resources. Okay, you click on resources, and you got the Glowstone.com library. Now I gotta tell you, man, I'm very impressed with how extensive this library is. Um, you've got um, several different uh, downloadable. Uh, what I, I clicked on it, they were PDF files, and I'm going to show those, actually. I downloaded everything. I went crazy. I went shopping on your site today, and I didn't pay anything, okay? So I, download, I downloaded all this stuff. I mean, it's awesome. There's so much good stuff up here. The only thing missing is a link to Auto Transport Intel. I'm That's kidding. True. Okay, so... <laughs> So, um, you go in here. Now, let's look at some of these assets that I got here. Um, now that I'm all embarrassed for plugging my own show shamelessly. Um, so, here we go. I mean, I got a... This is a folder. Let's see here. This is a fold. This folder is all of the PDFs that I downloaded from your site today. Uh, how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I got 13 PDFs. 
let me tell you, I could definitely write the ELD bedtime story. And um, let's go through some of this stuff. Like, okay, six ways non-compliance is costing you. Uh, wait, you can't see that. Hang on. Let's see. Let's move this over. Okay, so now you can see that. Six ways non-compliance is costing you. And this is a 27-page PDF. Um, you know, I mean, you've got, you start with some questions and then move into some specific information. Okay, but let's keep going. So there's one. Let's go to the second one. Six important reasons why you need to keep human technology part of your ELD solution. And again, you go into some information, facts, digitalizing compliance. I mean, we're talking about the past. And I think of the time, what? You could tell me. Did you work on some of this stuff? It's on the website, the, the, the webinars, the articles, uh, everything but, but my doing. Uh, we got to team of awesome experts that uh, I helped uh, pick their brains. So, yep, that's, that's me putting them together. That is awesome. Um, yeah, see, I mean, CSA score information, which uh, the CSA score, and that's why I put up the graphic. I'm just going to go back to that for a second, of talking about how this show, you know, compliance and safety and accountability CSA scores. I mean, that is essentially when I tried to think about what is what is really that this show is about. This show is about trucking and carrier compliance and maintaining a good CSA score, right? Because I mean, that's that's the goal. Maintain a good CSA score, stay in compliant, and that way you can stay focused on driving, loading, unloading, and being profitable. In a nutshell? Exactly. Exactly. And we, we highly recommend, um, you know, sure, peruse the website, but it's right there on the home page. If you want to hit subscribe to our monthly newsletter, um, and we write four or five articles uh, each month on, on the latest in, in, in trends in safety, driver training, DLD, DSA, whatever's out there. Um, we, we, we have that information, and, and uh, we don't spam, we don't third third-party send information out so um, and you can of course opt out anytime so a lot of great material that we try to push out there to you uh, everybody whether you're a caller to to construction to long haul oh man there's so much information here and then so I mean um, once I get through all the PDFs then I can go back to uh, your YouTube channel and you've got how many videos do you have there you have like 90 or? Uh, it could be or 90, that, 90 uh, subscribers, maybe 50 videos? Yeah, I mean, we've gotten uh, probably a dozen or so monthly webinars on all types of topics. Uh, we throw a annual, for about three years now, an annual safety and compliance conference here in Oregon. Okay. And, uh, and so there's, you know, five or six presentations, uh, videos there on each of those. Um, the recordings of those and um, tons of great material. Um, learn a little bit about what specifically we do, services that we offer. Um, it's all there. Uh, ELDs and how to use GeoCab. You know what? This is so cool. This video that I just pulled up, truckstop.com Facebook Live, I watched this video, I guess maybe five months ago. And um, this was one of the videos that I watched to help prepare for that show back in October, November. And then so then when I saw it on channel, I was like, oh, that's so cool, man. Um, yeah, Dave right in the middle there next to uh, right. and a couple of guys. Right. Yep. And so, yep. So there's Dave right there talking, right? Um, uh, what was I going to say is, um, oh, darn it, I lost my thought again. Um, you've got the videos, you've got the resources. Shoot, I was going to say something else about Glowstone. I do that, man. You know, I get, I get thinking so much. <laughs> um, and the CSA score. Anybody, hey, since we, since we got Luke here, and I've been doing so much of the talk and it's, it's horrendous. Um, does anybody have a specific question for Luke that he could answer before we let him go? Um, it's 9.41 p.m. Central Time, so I'll just keep you a few more minutes, Luke. Um, and while, while we're waiting on a question, 
Uh, I'm going to see if I can remember what it was that I was going to say. And did you have any other questions for me? Uh, I don't think so. I do. I do want to plug just our social social media. I mean, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. And uh, and if you don't want to follow the newsletter, we still post the content uh, on all those sites. So cool. Um, be sure to find us, Glowstones, G L O S T O N E, and uh, and you should find us. So. I know what it was. Clean Fleet. Do you want to talk about Clean yeah. Fleet for a minute? Yeah, so Clean Fleet is our sister company. Um, they're our drug and alcohol uh, side of things. And, and uh, I, I do the marketing as well for them. Uh, we have monthly webinars uh, for that as well. So all the rules, regulations, compliance. Whether you're in the trucking industry, transportation industry, or you know, even if you're just you know, a, a manufacturer or construction company, what have you, um, uh, Clean Fleet, Drug and alcohol management, uh, we have two drug testing sites, but we're mostly a third party uh, consortium where we help manage your uh, drug testing policy. So all owner operators, all, all uh, companies need to be, all drivers need to be in, in a, uh, to be drug tested um, on a random basis. And, and uh, that's what we do. We help um, with that whole process. We're the expert. I write all the articles there as well. So, uh, cool. Uh, you, you can quiz, quiz me on the, the, the DOT uh, drug and alcohol reg as well. Wow, yeah, you know what? Right? I don't think I could. I want to mention. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I know. I want to mention, I'm going to be updating the um, library resource page. But, yes. Uh, we have about four quizzes um, that is specifically on just DOT bag generally, hours of service, drug and alcohol for the trucking industry. Um, and has, I, think, I think we have one on hazmat um, for, for trucking and transportation. And I, I highly advise, take those quizzes, see how you do. I know the hours of service one, the average score is 75%. But these are straight from the federal regulations, and uh, it's another good study tool. Okay, that's great. Yeah, and you know, it's interesting. I mean, and that's another thing. I mean, is there's, you, you added up that the areas... That's one of the things that blows me away and I also like about your site is when you consider all of the areas that you have to be compliant, it's a lot. Is there a number of areas that you could even identify between the taxes and the reporting and the licensing and the drug consortiums and the ELD? I mean... Right? You've got, you got insurance, you've got... Right. Um, yeah, I mean, it's... it's a long, longer list, and, and you know, even if you're thinking of doing a new startup and that whole process, and you think that's something, we help drivers with that whole process, you know, hundred times uh, a, a year. So, um, you know, it's 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 crazy, but uh, you, you can help you get through it. And, and uh, the experts and our staff is incredible uh, what they know. Yeah. Yeah, no, clearly. And that and, and that's what really shows. That's what's cool is that we've managed to dive through so many sections and, and talk about different things. I'm glad we got to kind of do a recap of the live webinar today. Um, I know that, uh, you know, it's hard to cover a lot of information in that amount of time. Um, and even here, I mean, we just, we've only just hit upon um, several topics, but I think we've I think we've got a little bit, a little bit of minutia into this show, and I'm always glad when we can do that. So, um, I mean, I really appreciate that, and I and I uh, encourage anybody watching. If you've got more questions, I put uh, I put Lucas, uh, I put your email address in the um, in the scroll there. Did you see it, Luke? I did, and that's totally cool. Cool. Email me. If I can't answer it, uh, I'm sure someone on our staff will. So. Okay, cool. And there's the, here to help. That's cool. So we got the main phone number. You can email Luke, um, and you can also email me if, uh, if you can't get a hold of him. And um, this has been an incredibly informative, uh, another great information show I'm really proud of. So I really appreciate you and Glowstone um, agreeing to come on the show to give me this time. I can't thank you enough for doing that. Hey, thanks for having me on, and I uh, appreciate uh, you know, helping out in any way I can. Cool, man. Well, let's keep in touch. 
I hope I've got a couple new subscribers at Glowstone, and I will, uh, I don't know, I'll talk to you later. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you, Jay. All right, see Bye. ya. Bye. Oh, man. ELD, dude. What's cool is, um, I am proud that I'm able to, um, you know, talk to the other side, um, because, you know, where am I going here? Um, ELD, obviously, you know, ELD makes me crazy, and, um, I, you know, I, I've learned, I guess, one, one of the things I have learned recently is that, um, not to blame ELD, ELD is just a device, it's, um, just a, you know, a dumb terminal, and, you know, garbage in, garbage out, like they like to say, at the end of the day, but, um, the hours of service rules, it, Clearly, they need to be looked at further, um, and maybe just a few amendments. I really don't know. I'm not a lawyer, but it seems like we all have to become mini lawyers at times to get back to what it is that we actually do, um, which is we work in auto transport and car hauling, and um that's what this show is about so man i want to thank you guys for sticking around it's 9 47 and um i thank you for your time and your interest and your input um and all of the chatting man i love seeing the chat busy but also sometimes you know there's a lull where we're maybe we're processing information or maybe we're just going to get more kool-aid you know and we've hit a dry spot in the show i don't know but nonetheless, I want to thank you for your support of sticking around to this channel. Um, the channel is growing. Views are up. Subscriptions are up. And I do encourage you to go ahead and comment below. It's the comments and the likes and the shares that do a lot for my YouTube rankings, which are definitely on the rise. Um, and, man, we're just going to keep talking about all the segments of this industry we're going to keep it going. I will be back again every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock. I'm not sure what the show is next week. Still putting that together. Um, and actually, I find that to be one of the other interesting things about this show is that um, literally I was putting together this show up until 7.50 p.m. And I only had 10 minutes to kind of relax for a second. So keeping it current, keeping it relevant, and trying to keep it lighthearted when possible um and i appreciate the drivers out there that do the really hard work putting up with so many different elements that make this a tough job um that's what this show is about appreciating and fighting for drivers and appreciating uh what transportation logistics affords all of us so on that note i will see you guys Next Tuesday night, I'm firing up the car hauler. I hope you guys have a good evening. You take care out there, and I'll see you next week. Later.